There goes random. Love you. <laughs> Love you, baby. East Flagstaff Road. Of course, just got dropped off by random. Today is 20.4 uh, mile, which is what I thought I was doing yesterday when the big lows snuck up and bit me. Still can't figure out how I missed that entire section in the planning, in my planning on gut hooks, but that's the shortcoming of gut hooks. You just have this tiny little screen in the whatever that tiny little portion of the map you can see. And it's just not great for planning. I think I mentioned that before, so I won't belabor it today. Um, I should get into Caratunk. Shouldn't be too hard of a day. I'm good. I have basically just one <coughs> significant rise. Um, and the rest of it, I expect probably to be roots and rocks and mud. That seems to be what happens whenever we get a flat terrain profile. So I'm looking forward to a good day today. So let's get her done. We're winding this thing up. After that today, it's like 32 miles to Monson. That's it. Um, Random said she wanted to hike again. It's a little problematic out here simply because we've got the car that we somehow have to manage. And then between Caratunk and Monston, there's really no place to get off. So, um, this is the first pond of the day. I want to say this is called Flagstaff Lake. Kennebec River, 17.2 miles. That is the key number for today. That makes you want to go swimming. Not sure if you're gonna be able to hear this, but have like an afternoon thunderstorm rolling in. Had some really pronounced thunder. No lightning yet that I know of. And no rain yet, but it sounds like we're gonna get slammed here in a bit. Anyway, we're just you can see the trail is just spectacular. Actually, back when I was back, when you're near the lakes, you know, the lakes are just awesome. Oh, they so make you want to swim. Um, but the trail in that area is just horrible. All the trees around the lakes, of course. And, oh, the roots and everything. So it's funny, you're actually on the trail, much happier out here in the middle of nowhere. The green tunnel. Okay, only about four miles out from Caratunk. I don't get a lot of uh, sights to the sky, but when I do, it looks pretty blue. You can see the sun coming through the leaves and stuff, but they'll just be like small gray clouds, small gray areas. And I guess those are really active. As I said, I'm real comfortable under the canopies here. But obviously when I get to the river, I'm gonna have a lot more exposure. 
I wonder if this is part of the Kennebec, is this? Sounds like there's falls down through here, and I think I do remember. Oh, 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 wait a minute now. He freezes in his tracks, immediately seeing the blue blaze to go to, oh, wait a minute now. Aha, white blaze, blue blaze. That big, bigger route, which is kind of interesting, must go down to the falls. This slightly more narrow route. So now you see what I mean about the sky. A lot of blue, but then one patchy gray. <clears throat> which must be pretty, not that one, the one, uh, let's see here, let's see here. This is taking us out. Is it really taking us out onto these rocks next to the river? I don't think so. Is that really where I'm going? Well, that white blaze would indicate that's a Sobo blaze. But it is pointing this way as though Soboers would be coming through here. There's the blaze, so. This takes me back to my point. So, as I was saying, I was very comfortable under the canopy. But as I get to the river, there's gonna be greater exposure. And with the thunder, and potentially lightning, that may be a little precarious to try to A, cross the river, and B, do so, so in a thunder and or lightning storm. But the idle ramblings of a madman as we wander through the woods. You've heard it a hundred times. Kennebec. There's a warning about crossing it. And of course they want you to use the ferry, but the ferry only works till two o'clock. The problem is, is that you can see it's pretty swift. I don't know how deep it gets, that's the issue. You can see, it can get pretty deep. I'm not so sure about it because it is slippery. And it is deep and it is fast.
on, I've got to take my pack off and put it up over my shoulder, so hold on. Say it might be better two tenths of a mile upstream. Oh. Well, I've already sat down once. Bag's already soaked. I think I better turn you off and uh, give it a try with my poles down. Here we go. Okay, guys, not sure if it's clear to you, but I got across. Uh, not entirely certain where I'm supposed to go up from here, but here are the trail angels who are just canoeing by and pick me up. <laughs> Is that crazy or what? Um, so now I'm looking for the other side of the AT here that I can get up and get going. Hopefully gut hooks can help me out. Uh, if I can't find it myself, there should be some sort of blaze, I would think, along here. This is about almost straight across, so this might be it, but I do remember seeing on gut hook that it might be a little bit farther upstream. Oh, let me just check it out, check it out, check it out. I don't think so. Maybe it's over here, maybe it's over here. Seems to be a little bit more open. Boy, I have to do a big tick check tonight, I'll tell you. Ouch, 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 oh fuck, ouch. Okay, so I found it. Uh, okay, we got a little lean to campsite right here. Oh, we got a little privy over here. I guess if people have to hang out or chill for a bit. Not a bad little setup. It's a privy. And now we're back on the white blazes. That knee, so I was walking on that slanted rocky, slippery slope. 
I should have been down in the water where it was right calm there and flat there on the edge. But I think you saw I went up the hill thinking that that was a, directly across and the landing site. And when that happened, of course I slipped down and I twisted that knee, something awful, serious in pain. So I sat there for about 20 minutes or so and uh, just sort of let it calm down. Seems to be all right, frankly. So yeah, the Kennebec is, uh, you know, it's not crazy deep, but it's beyond your waistline. And once it gets beyond your waistline, and it's actually pushing on your hips, then the swiftness of the current is such that even with the poles pointed downstream and you using them as a brace to sort of crab walk your way across, what happens is that you, the current is able to basically grab the core part of your body and the resistance is such that it pulls you off your feet. I tried to turn to the side some to obviously decrease my profile, but even that didn't work. So I only got about a third of the way across. Um, and the, the pressure was such that I knew just a, you know, another foot or so, I would have been up off my feet. Just show you the swiftness of that current. You know, it's not crazy, not white water. Right here, I understand that up above there's like class four rapids. Anyway, that was an interesting experience. So I took a, I took a ferry. Uh, just not the designated ferry because I'm not going to have some arbitrary rule from the ATC dictating the timing of my travel. So, interesting, there was nobody else. I am kind of shocked by that. There's certainly a number of people that I had passed on the trail. And I thought I might have somebody come down. I consider that success and we will carry on from here. Woo! The Matrix. Loud vehicles. Fast vehicles. Welcome to Caratunk. You're here. Yes, I am. <laughs> 